So I'll start this project by explaining what I'm trying to do with the SketchUp video. So my project will have six posts on the side holding the girders and there'll be four girders, two in the back and two in the front. And they will hold uh, 14 rafters running across the girders. And on the top of the rafters, you will have these cross beams that you see over here. So I did some research and contacted my local timber merchants and got all the timber delivered at home. So they just crane lifted the whole lot onto my front yard. So these are the 2x12s, 2x10s, 2x4s and 2x2s and on the right hand side are the posts. The whole lot over here will be used to build my concrete base. Meanwhile, the kids, being kids, decided to have some fun with it. So the plan is to put the rear post over there with the girders attached to the wall. And over here, you would have the front post uh, sitting on the concrete pier. And that's where the rear girder will be, which will be attached to the wall with rafters running perpendicular to it. Now, the first stage for this is to dig the holes for the concrete post base. So I dug around three feet down and then filled it with a six inch layer of gravel and sand. This is to aid in drainage. Now here I'm just building a, a concrete form with using two by fours and a scrap pallet. And I'm using postcrete to build up my concrete base. So I do have a separate video uh, where I go in in depth in explaining what I'm trying to do. So basically you mix a postcrete with water and then build up the layers in between add rebars for uh, more holding power. So once the concrete is dried, we can go ahead and remove the 2x4 forms from it. Now with the post, we started off by painting it with fence paint. The only reason why we did this is to make it look a bit more darker rather than the stain which we'll use. So the edges of the posts are a bit sharp, so I took a round over a bit and used a router and routed out the edges to make it smooth. So that's the hard uh, edges and that's the rounded over smooth edges. So I did the same thing on all the posts and then I proceeded to sand the entire post. Because once you have put in the fence paint, the grain starts to rise and here I'm just cleaning it up and now I'm going to use my wood stain. So this is a brown mahogany color which will give it a much deeper and richer look. Overall I gave it three coats of the stain and sanded in between lightly and this is how it looks after the entire three stages of stain put on it. So next I took two posts and I'm going to make some sacrificial posts out of it. So these sacrificial posts will only be around 3 feet in height and the only reason why I'm doing it is because I could then go ahead and start installing the post bases anchor system. Over here for the, fr uh, the front four I'm using a Simpsons APB 100 So it's a standoff post base where you can get a variable height between 100mm uh, and 150mm and you just basically screw it in. So I've got a separate video with much more details on how to install these systems. So the post bases over here are held by sleeve anchor bolts and it's so strong that you can't even pull it out. So it's pretty easy to install in that you just turn it in and it screws it in. So now for the rear post I'll be using this product from Simpson. It's called a CPT66Z where 66 stands for 6x6 and they have uh, different variations for 4x4s and 8x8s and all that. The reason why I'm using this rather than the previous one which was the APB100-150 is because the rear posts are so close to the wall that there's no space to turn it around. 
So I got a much detailed video on the installation of this anchor base support. So if you're interested, please check that out as well. Anyway, you the way how you do it is you cut a slot and you slide it on the uh, fridge plate and drive in the dowels. So next we'll start uh, to shape up the end of the girder. So for this I created a template out of cardboard and then smoothen the edges. And the plan is to just uh, trace a line over here. And the case of girders, after I trace a line, I'll just join it up with a speed square so that it gets a drop. Now to cut this, I just use a jigsaw and just follow the shape. And for the other side, I just flip the template over so that I got the mirror image of that. And then follow the line again and just cut it with the jigsaw. So if you're interested in this jigsaw, this is a GST 90BE from Bosch and it's a pretty good one. So next I got all the rafters in my garage and I traced the shape on it which is a slight curve. And then I just smoothened out the rough edges. Here I got all the 14 rafters back in my garden and I'm just going to tighten all this up with a ratchet strap. Here with a mallet and just knocking it all in place. And once that's all done, I took my sander and went ahead and tried to smoothen it. The plan over here is to smooth it in such a way that they all look kind of similar. Because when you cut with a jigsaw separately, there's chances that it could go a little bit here and there. Over here, I'm just cutting all these rafters to the exact length which I need. So believe it or not, I do have a plan written on a piece of paper with the exact dimensions and all that. But the fact of the matter is that when you actually come to assemble it, things may not be in the same place. So I just screw this 2x4 timber there, which will be the support for the front girder. And once I marked it in place, I took a sharpie and outlined the exact locations where the posts would go in. This is so that when I come to the actual assembly, there, there's no surprises to it. So it's 396 centimeters from the inside of one of the posts to the further end. So I just divided that by 10 and marked it all out with my uh, uh, the measuring tape and the Sharpie. So doing this now is a better idea rather than having the post fully up and then trying to figure out how much the distance should all be. Here I kept the girder against the rear post and I was glad to see that the, uh, the post marks aligned exactly. So I took the other three girders and clamped it in place and then using a speed square I transferred the line from the first girder onto the other three girders. And this is how it looks like. The reason why I did this is I wanted all the lines to be exactly parallel so that when it comes to assembly it should be smooth. Here I built a jig with a few plywood and a, a spare 2x4s and through which I'll be using my circular saw to cut in the grooves. So inside these grooves will be where the rafters will go in. So I'm going in a depth of around 2 inches and the idea is that the rafter will have two teeth on it which will slide in between the girders. So if it sounds confusing at this point, just uh, bear with me and uh, further down on the video you'll see what I'm trying to do. So I just continued putting in all the 14 notches on the three girders and that took some time. So here I kept one of the rafters on the spare 2x4s. The notch over there will be where the rafter will sink in and there will be a notch on the rafter exactly there as well. And the rafters will be spaced every 16 inches or so. I screwed up another 2x4 on the rear of the, the front one. Now these two May I remind you are still sacrificial uh, uh, girders and I'm just going to use it to help me in the assembly. 
This is the template with which I will be cutting in the notches on the rafters. So notches on the rafters on the front of it. Plan is to just push it like that and draw in onto a fixed mark with a sharpie pen and then mark the X where it will be the waist. For the rear part I just used a 2x4 and drew up the angle. I repeated the entire process for all the 14 rafters. So next I use my jigsaw and cut out the waist. So there is a setting on this jigsaw where you can set the blower so it blows away the sawdust and, and your line is visible. Here I'm trying to just place the freshly cut rafter on the sacrificial girders and you can see it's a reasonably tight cut. So after the first one I was kind of happy with it. That's the rear side of the rafter and that looks like a good snug fit as well. So there I start with the next set of the rafters and it's wholly repetitive. So it's the same thing cutting two notches in the front like the teeth and the small notch in the rear. That's the whole lot of rafters stacked up. So once I did that I just went ahead and started placing it back on the sacrificial girders. The plan is to make sure that it fits snugly and wherever it didn't fit I went and shaved a little bit off using the jigsaw. So that's it all placed on the sacrificial girders. As you can see the uh, half lap joint kind of a feel gives it a solid strength. So before I finish this episode let me just quickly show you how I going to mark out the location of the cross beams. So the plan is to put 9 cross beams. So I just marked out the distance which is 220 centimeters and then divided that by 8. That is 1 minus the number of cross beams. And then I transferred that width to the other rafters using a roofing square. Over here you can see me making a small jig out of spare plywood. The gap between the two plywood is the, uh, is the width of the shoe plate of the circular saw and a 2x4. So here I'm cutting out notches with a circular saw and then I'm just using a chisel and a hammer to get rid of the waste. After this I would just use a circular saw and move it gently side to side to knock off any rough edges which are still there in the groove. And then I just repeated the same thing for the remaining 8 notches on the rafters. So with that out of the way, I took my electric filer and filed all the rough edges between all the notches on the rafters. 
and on the girders. So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, I'll walk you through how I build all the seats and all the other cross supports and the treatment done on the wood. Thanks for watching. If you are interested, please consider subscribing and hit the notification button below so that when I upload the next video, you will get notified of it. Thanks.